Now that we've established the idea of instantaneous rate of change with velocity as the limiting value of the average velocities as I make my time interval smaller and smaller and smaller, we're going to extend this idea to instantaneous rates of change of any function that's not necessarily the velocity function. So let's start with an arbitrary graph of f. And I have plotted two points on this graph, a f of a and x f of x. Just like before, if I wanted to find the average rate of change of this function on this interval, well, it would be the change in the uh, function values divided by the change in the x values, or the input values. So the average rate of change, which I'll say ARC, AROC, is equal to the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. And graphically, just as before, this would represent the slope of the secant line connecting these two points. All right, and if I wanted to know the instantaneous rate of change of this function, graphically, that's going to be represented by the slope of the tangent line at A, which we get by finding the limiting value of the slopes of the secant lines as I move this point closer and closer and closer to A, just like with the velocity function. So we can define the instantaneous rate of change as the limit as x approaches a, and mind you, this is from either side, as x approaches a of the average rates of change. Okay? Now, I want to talk about another way to write this same limit, um, and it is often seen and will be seen later as we develop some very important rules. Okay, let's draw that same graph, or pretty close to it. So this is my function f. This right here will be the point x f of a. I'm sorry, a f of a. There's a. There's f of a. And if this is an arbitrary point on the graph, which is going to be x f of x, Then, as we defined just a second ago, the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a will represent the instantaneous rate of change of f on that interval, which is equal to the slope of the tangent line at a. Now here's, I told you we were going to write this in another way. So x is some value that is away from a, and it's on either side of a. So one way we could define this arbitrary x is in terms of a. So instead of writing it as x, let's say it's a plus a little more, or a minus a little more. So a plus h. Okay, so this just means this is a little bit, or h more than what a is. All right, which means this point right here, or y value, is f of a plus h. All right, so there's no difference here except that I've renamed my uh, second point. Okay, well that would mean that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the limit, and I'm going to write it this way first, and then I'm going to clean it up. But as, instead of x approaching a, we're going to say a plus h approaches a. Oops, that should be over here. As a plus h approaches a of, instead of f of x, f of a plus h minus f of a all over a plus h minus a. I just replaced all my x's with a plus h's. Now look to see how this can be cleaned up. So this is the limit, and I'm going to come fill in this part in just a minute. So this is f of a plus h minus f of a all over, look what happens here, and I'm just left with h. Okay. And so another way to say a plus h approaches a is to say that h gets closer and closer and closer to zero, right? Because as h gets closer and closer to zero, 
a plus h gets closer and closer to a. So as h goes to 0. So this is an equivalent and alternate way to write this.